This is Pete from Great Lakes Makes, and today I'm going to show you how to design and make this 3D printed drill guide and doweling jig with removable inserts. Starting in Fusion 360, we'll create a new component and a sketch on one of our planes. Use the polygon tool to make a 0.77 inch hexagon. I plan to come back and machine aluminum inserts for this if the drill jig works out, so I want to accommodate that 0.75 inch stock. Next, create a series of circles around the hexagon and on either side to define the outside form, and then come back with lines to finish out the shape. Finally, constrain everything using coincident and tangent constraints. I prefer to use the geometric constraints before coming back with numerical dimensions so that I can get the overall form locked down. Set the pin diameter at 0.4 inches and space them an inch and a quarter from the center. You can repeat this on both sides. It is possible to mirror this across the center line, but I prefer to work in the full form. Next, dimension the outside diameter at an inch and a quarter and the center hole at 0.645 inches to accommodate a 5 8 inch bushing. When you're finished, exit the sketch and use the extrude tool to push and pull the shape, starting with the pins and extrude those up 0.8 inches. When you're done, the sketch will disappear, but you can turn that back on by expanding the tree and turning on the light bulb next to the sketch. Finish out the shape using the extrude tool. With the solid body created, come back and create a sketch on the top surface, and we'll use this to cut out a pocket into the solid body to reduce the material usage. You can get creative in the shape here, but I use the offset tool to generate my profile, offsetting the outside profile inside and extruding out the hexagon outwards. I added a couple of webs, and we were ready to cut those pockets. When you're finished, exit the sketch and use the extrude tool to cut the pockets down into the solid body. I cut in about half the distance, 0.2 inches. The next step will come back and add fillets to anywhere that the, the printer head will trace and then come back and add chamfers anywhere that's in the Z direction, like touching the build plate, the tops of the pins, and the top surface of the jig. The final feature to add is a 0.11 inch diameter hole that goes through the hex. I'll come back and tap this with a number 6 screw to act as a set screw to hold my inserts in place. So create this, the circle, center it on the face, and extrude it to cut it away. I repeated this process using a single sketch to create the inserts with a hexagon and two circles to create the form. I created inserts with hole diameters from an eighth of an inch up through three eighths of an inch in sixteenth in inch increments. Extrude the shape up and then come back and add your fillets and chamfers to smooth out the shape. Once the parts were off the printer, I came back with a number 632 tap and cut threads through the set screw hole in the side of the part. This isn't strictly required, but I think having a screw to lock the insert in place will really be useful in the long run. So you can see the insert snap into place, and the set screw holds it in. I designed this part to accommodate up to a 2 inch thick board, so it easily accommodates the inch and a half thickness of a 2x4, and helps me create centered holes in any situation. You could also flip it around and use it flat to create a perpendicular hole in the flat surface of a board. So if you don't have a biscuit joiner or a festival domino, you can use this to center holes to create strong dowel joints to join boards together. This is Pete from Great Lakes Makes, and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I try to create videos with mixing 3D printing and other maker skills, and put out videos every week. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button, and I'd really enjoy it. If you want to see me make something else, hit the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.